Hello, hope you are doing well. Today I am going to take up a poem from NCERT's English textbook for class 12. The name of the book is Flamingo. We are going to take up the poem A Thing of Beauty. This poem is written by John Keats. John Keats was a British romantic poet. He was trained to be a surgeon, but Keats decided to devote himself wholly to poetry. That was his passion. Keats' poetry was able to evoke many moods and aspirations. He often interpreted myths in his work to make deeper philosophical points. Today, we shall discuss an excerpt from his very first epic poem, Endymion, based on a Greek myth. The poem describes how a shepherd named Endymion falls in love with the moon goddess. The poet uses the premise of the story to convey that the journey of finding love or fulfilling a dream is often filled with struggles. Whenever we strive to achieve a goal, we face challenges. I think that is true for all of us, isn't it? So even though the poem was written in 1818, its message is relevant even today. Now the extract that we will discuss today focuses on how beautiful things give us pleasure and alleviate suffering and sorrow. Like we all face ups and downs in our life. But I think we should not forget that you know we can find moments of happiness, healing, positivity around us. We have to be open towards everything. We have to be positive towards things that are happening around us. As you all know that poems are meant to be read aloud. Therefore, you, we get the meaning of the poem with proper stress, intonation and we must pay attention to the punctuation marks because punctuation marks help us gather meaning. If it is a comma, that means a shorter pause. If it is a full stop, that means we have to pause for a longer period and a new idea is going to begin after the full stop. So while reading the poem, one has to keep all these things in mind. I am going to read the poem aloud for you. Please enjoy listening to the poem and you can also open your books on page 98. A thing of beauty is a joy forever. It is true. I believe it is not an empty cliche to say that beauty is present all around us. If one is observant, one can find beauty in the smallest of gestures, a smile, nature and even within ourselves. A sense of calm, some moments of silence, a hot cup of tea can all enable us to contemplate the beauty around us. Beauty gives pleasure to all our senses. True beauty, however, shows itself in noble actions and good ideas. Please remember, Keats is not writing only to appreciate nature, natural beauty. The kind of beauty is repeated in one's dreams and deeds and even when one rests, a beautiful object is always treasured in our mind because it provides us eternal and everlasting joy. So therefore, you know, we can say that beauty is all around us. Especially beauty is there in our noble deeds, when we are kind to someone. The happiness that anything beautiful provides never fades into nothingness, but multiplies manifold whenever it returns to our mind. Before we read the poem, let us discuss a few questions. The question is, why do you find a particular thing or person beautiful? Give reasons why. Take down your 
notebooks, pen or pencil, write down. Why do you find a particular thing beautiful? You may have your reasons. Write down those reasons. Your reasons can be different from your friends or from us or from your teachers. But that's good. That's your creativity. Right? Have you noted down all the points? Maybe later you can develop these points into a discourse and can share with your friends and with your teacher. Now the next question, what pleasure does a beautiful thing give us? What kind of pleasure? You see beauty touches our senses, eyes, beautiful things, then we hear, we can touch, we can feel. So all these things, they soothe our senses, they give happiness to our senses. So what pleasure does a beautiful thing give us? Write a paragraph on this. Maybe you can share with us later on our CIT, NCERT email ID and we will get back to you. Now next question is, are beautiful things worth treasuring? Do you treasure beautiful things? You see, I remember when I was a child, I would pick up stones or shells or leaves or flowers that I found beautiful and I would put them in my books. So that is a way of treasuring them. So do you do that? Maybe now your idea of beauty has changed. It depends from person to person. You can write a paragraph on this also and this will be a creative piece. Now we begin with the poem. As you all know, the title of the poem is A Thing of Beauty. And you all know that poems are meant to be read aloud with proper tone, intonation and stress. And at the same time, we have to take care of the punctuation marks because punctuation marks help us gather the meaning of the poem. If it is a comma, it is a shorter pause. If it is a semicolon, maybe we pause for a little longer. Full stop means one idea has come to an end. We, then we give a greater pause and move on to the next idea. And poems have to be enjoyed. You have to listen to the poem to be able to enjoy it and to get the meaning out of it. You can open your books on page 98. A thing of beauty is a joy forever. Its loveliness increases. It will never pass into nothingness, but will keep a bower quiet for us and a sleep full of sweet dreams and health and quiet breathing. Therefore, on every morrow, are we wreathing a flowery band to bind us to the earth, spite of despondence of the inhuman dearth of noble natures, of the gloomy days, of all the unhealthy and over darkened ways made for our searching. Yes, in spite of all, some shape of beauty moves away the pall. From our dark spirits, such the sun, the moon, trees old and young, sprouting a shady boon for simple sheep and such are daffodils. With the green world they live in and clear rills that for themselves a cooling covert make gains the hot season, the mid forest break. Rich with sprinkling of fair musk rose blooms and such too is the grandeur of the dooms we have imagined for the mighty deed. All lovely tales 
that we have heard or read an endless fountain of immortal drink pouring on to us from the heavens bring how beautiful the poem is did you enjoy listening to the poem you know roughly we gather the idea the poet is trying to tell us that even if there is something sad we overcome it there are so many beautiful things around us that they give us solace he has used some words which are old english from old english for example rills rills means small streams and break break here means a thick mass of ferns now here you have to notice the consistency in rhyme scheme and line length also notice the balance in each sentence of the poem as in of noble natures of the gloomy days of all the unhealthy and over darkened ways made for our searching yes in spite of all a thing of beauty is a joy forever beauty in whatever form it may be found is an eternal joy to humans because it offers humans the constant opportunity to reflect on that beauty which stands in such stark contrast to the dejection monotony and the ugliness of our early day lives it dispels negativity in spite of all the difficulties and the sufferings that humans face beauty has the ability to produce happiness and temporarily shift the burdens that humans bear the poet therefore focuses on the theme of happiness and how it can be experienced it inspires us and gives us the courage to fight against all odds with this we have come to the end of this session i hope you enjoyed listening to the poem now i want you to read the poem on your own i am sure you will be able to appreciate the poem on your own happy reading thank you